Performance, no less. And what exactly constitutes the performance moniker you may ask? Well, increases and improvements everywhere, of course. This is uh, somewhat more of uh, an evolution than a revolution. The primary platform and foundation is still very similar to the previous generation. Think of this more of a heavy facelift, aesthetically significantly different. Under the skin, we have more power, more torque, and uh, more revs. So this engine, we still have the 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10, uh, but the revs are now up to 8,700 RPM, which from a naturally aspirated V10 is sublime. Check this out, I'm gonna drop it down a few cogs. We're idling at 6,000 RPM now in uh, second gear. Are you ready? Oh. <laughs> wow. And as you might be able to detect, while it still has obviously retained that characterful V10 engine tone, it's not quite as aggressive and sharp as it used to be in the previous car. Now there's a reason for that, and it's not actually Audi's fault. Um, governed by the powers that be, the rules and regulations which are applied to manufacturers these days have required across the board, across every manufacturer, for them to apply a particulate filter, which is ultimately all to do with emissions. As a result, it has applied a slightly muffled effect to the exhaust character. It's still there, I mean, if I drop the windows, you can, you can still hear it. But, I don't know, it's not quite as raw and as raspy as the previous generation car. Bit of a shame because for me, the heart and soul of this, and what separates it apart from other cars in this space, is that naturally aspirated V10. However, what it hasn't detracted from is the relentless energy upon which this propels you down the asphalt is breathtaking. Now one thing that I was hoping they might have engineered into this car, which was a criticism for me of the previous gen, was the gearbox is arguably too good. I know that might be somewhat of a cliche statement, but when you're in a supercar, we buy these things with the heart, don't we? Let's face it, we, did, we don't need any of these things, but we want them all. And because they are uh, purchases of the heart and not with the mind, and they are very much driven by soul and character, I was kind of hoping that they may have engineered a little bit of aggression into the gear shifts. Now, while they are technically superior, they are very impressive, gear shifts, what it doesn't give you upon upshifts is much of a sort of acknowledgement that you have initiated that shift. I have said in the past that twin clutch boxes deliver a gear shift with an audible tone change of uh, cog actuation. This has taken things to the next level. I mean, if it wasn't for me pulling on that paddle, I actually wouldn't know this car has changed gear, which when you're in automatic, you can knock the drive select left if you want to drive the car in manual, centralized if you want to drive it in auto. When it's in auto, this thing is up there with the best. It is completely seamless. So when you're driving around town and you're using it as a daily driver, which this, by the way, is now one of the most complete supercar packages I have ever experienced. If you wanted to drive one of these every single day, it's not even a, a second thought. Yes, you don't have too much space in the front, particularly because it's still retained a quattro all-wheel drive system, so there is a differential in the front taking up some otherwise usable boot space. But in terms of usability and practicality, what you have here is a 620 horsepower four-wheel drive daily supercar with a naturally aspirated V10. As a complete package, it's one of the best in the world. However, when you use this drive select switch here to go from comfort to dynamic, which you could also read as sport, for me, it's not quite sporty enough. Yes, when you press the accelerator, your peripheral vision is distorted by the visceral passing of hedgerows, but it doesn't deliver that momentum of speed with that much sense of occasion. You just sort of see the numbers fly by and all of a sudden and you're like, ah, I better use those carbon ceramic brakes, which I'm sure they've improved. The way this thing stops gives you so much confidence in the usability of the car. Actually, at slower speeds, it takes a little bit of adapting to the modulation of these carbon ceramics because they're so capable 
they're very grabby at first. You do adapt to it pretty early on, but at first they're almost like a light switch. The brakes are on or off. But when you're using this kind of performance, because the car instills you with confidence from the get, you're able to exploit so much of its potential. The mechanical grip is huge. And as a result, you are thankful for knowing that under your foot, there is some serious stopping power. Now, interestingly, if you watch the video before this, you may or may not know that I have just stepped out of, I'm filming it the same day, I stepped out of the original Audi R8 V8 manual. 420 horsepower, this is 620. And it's fascinating to witness the evolution of this platform. I mean, when that car launched, it really made the industry stand to attention. It still is one of my all time favorite cars. And uh, if you go back and listen to my personal story of that car, it quite literally changed my life. But where they have taken that from there to here is nothing short of extraordinary. Having driven them back to back, I feel like I have discovered some sort of alien spacecraft. The performance of this is diaphragm bending. It's berserk, like so. One very interesting character trait of the V10 engine is that from zero RPM to 6,000, it's linear, meaty, full of torque, we're up now by the way, basically 430 pounds feet of torque in the performance edition. But when it reaches six and a half, there is this massive second punch after six and a half thousand, and it takes on a new life. You might be able to actually hear it, right? So we're at uh, 4,000 RPM now. Just listen to when it reaches around about six. You'll hear it. See that? It just... The delivery of the performance takes this life of its own and it just comes on with ferocious energy. And I love that. I love the fact that uh, below speeds where you're taking it steady, it's thick with torque, very usable, exploitable. And then when you're really up it, the energy gets cranked up. And that essentially makes it really playful if you don't want to stay in that torque band and use the fizzy energy of the revs. It's lovely to have that. But things like that really add up when they've had to apply the particulate filter, which I am sad to say has taken a bit of the shine from this naturally aspirated engine. Interestingly, I think as the rest of the world introduces particulate filters to their exhaust systems, I think we're gonna see the aftermarket exhaust world explode. Not that it isn't already popular, but now you've really got a reason because there is this unlocking mechanism available to once again un unleash effectively what you've paid for. As I mentioned when I started, you're not buying this car with the brain. You're buying it with your heart and your heart's talking to your soul and it wants a bit of V10. And if there's aftermarket people out there unlocking that heart and soul, I think, it, I think we're honestly gonna see that go bonkers. Handling. Now, I've noticed that we have Michelin rubber on here. The front end, as a result, is surgical. This, the way this thing turns in, even with Quattro all-wheel drive, there is no evidence of the front end on this washing out. But thankfully, what Audi have done is revised the steering weight and feel. So not only because they've recalibrated the electromechanical steering, which in the previous generation was for want of a better word, hollow. So there's more weight through this, but also we have revised suspension and damping. And I can tell, I mean, that's as simple as that. The front end is fantastic. It is, surprisingly, I can't really decipher much of a difference between the ride quality in comfort and dynamic. It kind of feels remotely stiff across the board. There's two sides of looking at this car. One half of me is a little bit frustrated because on, on the outset, you approach it as this loud, I mean, this is in Vegas yellow, naturally aspirated V10 flagship supercar from Audi. So on paper, you're like, this thing is gonna be an animal. But actually, it's very civilized and 
maybe that's, I wouldn't go so far as to say it's downfall, that's its niche, that's where it sits, is that it is an incredibly usable, uh, incredibly fast, but from your supercar, do you want it to be so good? What it isn't doing for me is positioning itself as that special, you know, sunny Sunday afternoon car. That's not a problem, that's just where this thing sits. And really, the best car is the car that you can use the most often, right? It's not the kind of car that you're gonna bring out because it's the perfect road conditions, the sun shining and the tarmac's dry. This thing would relish the fact that it was driving on a wet road. In fact, the performance would be no different at all. And that's where this car is really special. But for me, what it isn't doing is keeping me on my toes. I'm not busy in interacting with it. I don't necessarily step out of this car thinking I've just been for a hair-raising ride. And on paper, that sounds bonkers because it's 620 horsepower and the engine is phenomenal. But it's so Audi that you could just exploit it every day of the week. This isn't a criticism. This is just a sort of heads up that if you want something that's gonna set your arse alight, this might not be it. But if you want something that you could exploit just ludicrous amounts of performance on your way to the shops, I don't know where to go from here. It's that composed. And in that respect, Audi have carved their own niche, haven't they? For me, this is the most exotic daily driver supercar. You might compare this with the likes of a 911 Turbo, but it doesn't have the engine. It doesn't have that naturally aspirated V10. So it really has carved its own niche. And what they've gone and done is made that niche broader, wider, deeper, better, more involving, but they've still delivered that experience in a package where you'd quite happily pick up your grandma for afternoon tea. But overall, I just think they've evolved this platform to become, yet again, one of the best in its segments as a daily driver supercar. That's where it started, that's where it remains, and it's still one of the best. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you next time. Ciao.